Hello everyone, I am Walt, and today we are talking about learning via the internet. So, yes, this is our second unit for the video series about internet psychology. And yeah, let's uh, just dive on into learning via the internet. The internet is often criticized as being just full of cat videos and, you know, having all this just like a bunch of memes and stuff. And it not really being about education, it's being, you know, a waste of time, it's going to ruin humanity. Well, as we learned in our first unit, this is not the case. The internet is not about to be the technology that ruins humanity by any means. <laughs> I think we can all just simply accept that and work with that. It is not about to do that for humanity. Okay, once we get past that part of it, that the fact that the internet's not about to ruin everything, then what about learning via the internet? Surely this is possible, right? I mean, clearly there's going to be some educational materials, like, you know, materials we have on this channel and the self-help and kind of psychology areas, and of course chess videos and various other things we have here, besides just like game walkthroughs, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, there are so many materials out there on the internet for learning, and so... What really makes this work, you know? What, what really allows the internet to be kind of a source of learning? And for various teaching, what can be advantageous about teaching on the internet? Well, we'll cover a few things throughout this entire unit, but really I'd say the purpose of this one is to give you guys a little bit of a broader overview about this, of saying, okay, you know, at the end of the day, really what is the internet going to be able to, to teach us? How are we going to be able to learn? Because when a lot of people think of online courses and the various kind of active learning materials that come with online courses, a lot of people shy away from them. And I believe there's some good reasons for that. There have been some online courses that have been done badly and that can, you know, micromanage or cause too much work or do many things wrong and that kind of stuff. I think that this is definitely a case with almost any teaching style that this can happen. But I think that just people, you know, have the scare, you know, of new technology. But then it's really, how am I supposed to learn stuff through, you know, online methods? Well, there are a few different important methods, really, to realize about online learning. One of them is simply that you can learn better skills with some types of online learning based on the fact that you can have repetitive kind of tasks. And I don't mean, you know, uh, overly repetitive or anything, but you can have these short assignments that can occur on pretty quick bases. Like, you know, you can have things that are due just a little bit every day. Because one problem with your traditional class style is the fact that people aren't necessarily engaging enough with material. Now, if you're a good student, I suppose you're probably doing a little bit of it every day and, you know, the ideal thing of studying two weeks in advance, but we all know that like 90% of people don't do that, so <laughs> at least. And with that fact, a lot of people have a hard time kind of learning material because they're not using it, they're not thinking about it, they're not applying it consistently. So one thing that online classes have an advantage in, at least via the article you guys can read, checked out in the uh, description here, is simply to say, you know what, we can have these short kind of repetitive tasks, these, you know, short assignments basically that show up. Short and frequent, I believe, would be a better terminology on that one that allows you really to pull this off, you know, and that's a good way to learn. Of course, writing skills are another thing that can be learned in an online method because the internet allows people to write to a variety of audiences. You can be writing to so many different kinds of people, yet when it comes to classes, most people are simply writing to the TA or the professor, you know, and so they have to structure their language around that. But you can pick up better writing skills if you have the entire audience talking to somebody more than just the professor, more than just, you know, that. Being able to talk to the entire student body, have everybody read everybody else's responses. Assuming you have a good way to make that happen, that this, this really can be an, an advantageous thing because then writing to multiple audiences is also something that is very similar to what people end up doing when they're writing things on the internet. You know, you're writing a comment not just to one person, but it goes to a variety of audiences. And that's really going to be the day and age we live in here with a change to looking at things from that perspective. So that's one of the major things you can also learn on the internet. <laughs> You can pick up better critical thinking skills, of course, through the access to more materials. You can bypass problems of textbook expenses by having multiple internet materials that are around there. All these kind of things can be learned via internet classes. And of course, one of the best things is about optimizing performance. See, so many people perform at different times of day. For example, I hate mornings and when it comes to performance. A little ironic, I trade in the mornings, but you know, the markets are what they are kind of thing. <laughs> so I gotta trade the uh, New York 
London overlap and I don't live in a time zone where that's at night. So, you know, mornings it is. Anywho, but I don't like my classes in the morning. Yet back in high school, I had to go there at like 7.55 in the morning to start, you know, learning materials. Yet via the internet, with internet classes, you don't have to have any specific lecture time. There are actually people who learn at all different times of day, okay? You know, some people are night owls, some people are morning people, some people work best in the afternoons or at lunchtime, etc. So you can never really have a lecture that's specifically at one, you know, like time that's going to satisfy everybody because some people are going to be, you know, off because of this time. And the same goes for tests. You know, because people, when it comes to testing, have issues around testing because, you know, I, for example, I had a test um, just only like a semester ago for one of my college classes that was early in the morning. You know, it was not only going to interrupt my trading and the money I was making and my work there, which was, you know, no fun, but it was also early in the morning when I'm not ready to focus on taking a test. So these kind of things can really affect students so they don't have, you know, the optimal performance that they really have the potential to have. And so I think that that's an important thing you need to realize that internet classes have the potential to do. And that's not saying that all of them will do this, but they really have the potential to teach in that manner, at least when it comes to direct online learning there. Of course, another great ability of these, in addition to what we've already mentioned, which has been quite a lot when it comes to critical thinking skills and all, learning things, repetition, all these kind of materials. Really, there's so many good things about internet classes that I don't think many people take advantage of when it comes to teaching them. One advantage, of course, is that it's a teaching style that is going to be something you can use for years on end. It's not something you have to constantly engage in. It doesn't have to be a specific time. It can cut costs via this way. That's been an effective method. Yeah, and overall it can allow for better mastery of materials because of this method here with people using it. You can add little quizzes so people truly have knowledge before they're moving on. And some of this can be micromanagement if you do it incorrectly. It can be a problem if this is not done right. But really there's so many good things that can happen if you have, you know, really the opportunities to use the tools for internet teaching. And of course, one of the big things we're going to talk about in the next video is going to be about people being able to teach materials to a wider audience and not to have to do it through traditional means, you know, at a certain time, a certain place. You can make videos that will last for years and years and years, and people can learn information in this kind of, you know, in this kind of order. And that can be something that the internet really shows is a potential and something that can be extremely valuable. Anyway, I would say that those are some good takeaways from internet learning. Of course, read the article here by the professor of this class and all that is written for a great psychology article on this exact topic that can tell you so much about it. So anyway, thank you guys for watching, checking out this series. Of course, this is the beginning of Unit 2 and it is only the beginning. We are going to be covering a lot more throughout this entire thing and, of course, addressing all the various, you know, aspects of internet learning in so many areas. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time with our next video. Stay tuned. I'll see you then.